Rub up your engines! Oh, the White House is trying to save us. They just announced the sale of an additional 20 million barrels of oil to try to help the crisis. Understand one thing. The United States uses 19.78 million barrels per day. So that's just a tad over a day's use. We're really talking about a spit in the bucket there. 20 million barrels, that's a lot of oil, right? Yeah, well, yeah, a little over one day of what we use in the United States. So it's not exactly a meaningful figure, but they put it out. Look at this big figure. We gave all this stuff out. Yeah, it was strategic oil reserve. They put it out there another day's worth. And of course, the White House brags, well, we've loaded probably by 40 cents a gallon. No, they didn't. It's just market forces. People aren't buying as much gas, and the price is going to come down. Like I say, like I've been saying for years, if you don't buy someone's product, they can't keep charging more money. That's just the way that it goes. These guys go by massive volume with gasoline. People stop buying it. Guess what? The price will come down. That's just the way that it goes. It has nothing to do with the White House. It's market forces. Nobody ever looks at what's underlying it. And it is market forces. If everybody stopped buying gasoline, the price would go way down. Let me tell you, it would go way down. <laughs> That's just the way it works. It has nothing to do with, oh, look, we'll spit a little more in the bucket. The day's worth. Oh, look how it affected things. They have no idea what affected it, you know? They're just taking credit for a market force that works on its own. And it's probably a good thing that the market forces work on their own because if the government actually controlled them, imagine the mess we would be with those numbskulls trying to operate anything. Well, if you and a Kia or a Hyundai, of course, I tell you, you don't buy one in the first place, you might get a free engine because there are thousands of them out there they can get a free engine and you might not know about it. Actually, it's millions of people that own them. Of course, some of them are in junkyards, so it's too late then. And it doesn't matter if you're the second or third owner. They got to replace the bad engines. Now, this is 2011 to 2019 Hyundai and Kia, including, and here's a list, Hyundai Sonata, Hyundai Santa Fe Sport, Hyundai Tucson, Kia Optimo, Kia Sportage, and Kia Sorento. Now, they're not all models, so you got to get your VIN number. Go to the National Highway Traffic Safety Association.gov website, put in your VIN number. Number, it'll tell you if it's recalled. But of course, this is Kia and Hyundai, the Korean car manufacturers that are notorious for weaseling out. They make you prove that you took it in for the software upgrade and that the oil was changed regularly and you have proof of it, right? One guy took it in, they wouldn't give him an engine because he didn't have proof because his brother in law changed the oil in the driveway. Well, heck, you know how it is. They're all going to try to wheedle their way out of it. That's just the way those companies are. They're scumbags, right? Well, you can't prove this. Hey, to me, if a guy has a receipt for oil and filter, do it yourself. Maybe video with your camera. Here I am changing the oil, you know. It's gone that bad. Man. You have to prove it. Here, look, here's the oil. It's being changed. Here's the mileage. Maybe I'll have to start filming that stuff for these idiots, you know. But you might be able to get a free engine out of the deal. And here's the real kicker. If you paid for an engine, they have to reimburse you. That's the best one. If you paid for an engine, they have to reimburse you. So look it up. See if you can get a free engine. But if you're like me, don't buy one of those Korean crappers in the first place. Ain't have to worry about the engine blowing up because you don't own one. Credenden says, my cylinder one is still misfiring on my 09 yards with 148,000 miles. Guy swapped fuel injector with one and two and then decided to replace them both. I get it back. It's still misfiring on number one. What can I do? All right. Well, we won't start with a different mechanic. The guy's obviously an idiot who doesn't know what he's doing. You replace two fuel injectors, you still got the same thing. One, he shouldn't have replaced them. Oh, you don't just guess with stuff like that. You test. If you have a misfire on cylinder one, the obvious things like he changed the coil on plug, ignition coil, he changed the spark plugs, and fuel injector didn't fix it, then generally on those, it's one of two things. You either got a mechanical failure in the engine or you got a failure in the electronics. If either the electronics that feeds the fuel injector and that isn't working right, you'll get a misfire in cylinder one. If the electronics don't pulse the ignition system correctly, you'll get a misfire in cylinder number one or Worst case scenario, and often it's not those with that kind of mileage, 148, the engine's flat wearing out because it's just wearing out. So what you want to do is a wet and dry compression test of the engine. You take the spark plugs out, you put a compression gauge, crank it over, see what it is. Say cylinder number one is really low and the others aren't. Cylinder number one shot, you have to rebuild the engine, you probably junk the car. It's an old yard, so it's not worth anything or put a used engine in it. But let's say 
they're all kind of similar. Then you put a teaspoon of oil in each cylinder and do a compression test wet. If the number one cylinder goes way up, that means the piston rings are worn out and you have to rebuild the engine again. So if you got a problem car, that's the best thing to start with because don't check a billion things and pay a guy $150 an hour to spend four hours checking your car. That's a four cylinder engine, so it's easy to work at. 15 minutes, you can do a wet and dry compression test and you can see it's the engine. And then you know, don't want to put another engine, or I just want to get rid of the car. Emmanuel says, I got a 98. F-150 and I have an anti-theft problem. I try to start it. It keeps saying theft. I want to know why this happens. The car that won't start in the anti-theft light is I'm telling you the theft system thinks somebody's stealing the car. So do my one numero uno thing, but you got to plan ahead for this unfortunately. If you haven't done it, it's too late. Yes, have a spare key. Stick it in a drawer in your house where you remember where it is. You got that problem? Try the spare key. If it starts, you know your original key is bad. Throw it away. Then drive your car with the key that works to a locksmith where they can make you another key. It's a lot cheaper if you go to them and then away you go. Now, if you do have another known good key, you put it in and it won't start, then you do have a problem in the anti-theft system. None of that stuff you can fix yourself because it requires a special computer to figure out what's wrong. And then once you fix it, let's say if it's the lock assembly, then you have to reprogram it to be accepted for the computer in the vehicle. You can't do that yourself. Let's say that is the case. Then you got two choices. You could spend a fortune towing it to a dealer and having them work on it and they'll charge you out of the kitchen sink, right? Or Go back to your friendly local locksmith. Most of them will make house calls for vehicles. They ask them, can you fix Ford anti-thefts? And they say, yeah, have them come over. They'll do it in your driveway. Then you save the tow. It'll, today it'll cost you anywhere from 150 to 250 to tow it. So pray you got a good key and it works. That's why you want to plan a little ahead. Jay Fix It Up says, I have an electrical issue with my 2014 Jetta. When I turn the high beams, nothing pops up in the dash, but they work. Is there anything I can try before I take it to the dealership? Here's the thing. It's a 2014, right? Everything is fancy computerized, and it's not like the old days. You could just have a burnout bulb, right? But you'd have to take the dash apart. It's not all that hard on a Volkswagen. You pop plastic crap off, you can pull it out. And you used to just take the bulb out, put another bulb in, and away you go. But that has an LED. Generally, the LEDs last forever. You probably have a problem in the wiring warning you. So my advice is go out, turn your headlights on at night. They work fine. Then put your high beams on. They work fine live with it who cares <laughs> you're gonna spend a fortune at the volkswagen deal having that led system work on they'll try to sell you everything and if they work who really cares you can tell if you got brights on and up i look at this bright and if you don't know if your brights are on then hit them again and if it gets brighter they weren't on and if it gets dimmer that means they were on you just turned them off <laughs> Ah. Diker 800 says, I went through an automatic car wash. Now my Honda Civic has error messages. It says, check ABS, check VSA system, check power steering. I don't have any problems with the car, but these messages, how do I get rid of them? Help. All right. Well, to get rid of them in the future, is don't go to the car wash, automatic car wash anymore. They spray things all over the place and all that electronic stuff can be damaged. What's probably happened, water gets on those systems, the ABS measuring systems, the power steering stuff. Computers check everything. They keep going through all the systems. They start and do it again. They find a problem, they'll trip a call. I'm assuming you just went to the car wash. My advice is drive it around for a week. If they go off, great. It dried out and then the computer see there's no problem. If it doesn't, go to a guy like me first. Say, could you reset my stuff? And then I'd reset the stuff and say, go ahead. Here's your codes. I'd read them and I'd print them out. Then drive it around. If they don't come back, hey, it's just because they got wet. A lot of times they won't reset themselves on some of those systems. They have to be manually reset. But normally you drive it for a week and you drive it around and it's dry. Stay away from big puddles. Don't go to the car wash anymore. And the light goes off it will reset itself if there's no actual damage other than it triggered a problem because it was wet and it gave bad data and then when it dries out and it stops it'll go back to normal. Dexter says, should I fix it or junk it? I got an 07 Toyota Avalon. It was used for a power commute of 155 miles a day for five years. So it's 313,000 miles on it. I'm the second owner and I bought it as a demo with 33,000 miles. Last year it got a judder. My 79 year old father who I gave the car to took it to a Pep Boys and they wanted 6,800 bucks including replacing the entire steering column. I don't want to put more than two grand or should I just junk it or sell it to charity? All right, well, numero uno, find a guy like me in your area to look at it. Those are well-made cars. Understand the service rider at those chain repair stores generally gets a percentage of 
the profit on each deal. So you get your car fixed. If the bill's 6,800 bucks, maybe he gets two, 3% of that, right? So of course he wants the highest bills possible. I doubt that your vehicle needs $6,800 worth of work. The Avalons can run a really long time. There might be a little wear in a steering column, but $6,800, I think the guy's out of his mind. Get a guy like me to analyze it first. That's a problem with a lot of these places. They'll say, hey, bring it in. We check them out for free. And then they try to sell you the kitchen sink. So start by going somewhere else. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.